Well, good morning again. If you would join me by taking your Bible, if you brought one in today, and if you didn't bring a Bible, maybe you have a smartphone or a tablet that you'd like to follow along with the Bible app, we'll let you know that in the bulletin you'll see if you are looking for Wi-Fi access to be able to follow along with the sermon, that is... Not to catch up on college football scores or something like that while I'm preaching. There, there is a password and uh, let you know with the network you can join in. Uh, that is in the bulletin. And so I'll give you a heads up on that. But we're going to look at Daniel chapter 10 today. We'll finish up our series, Unshakable. Last week, if you were with us, we looked at Daniel chapter 9. And in Daniel chapter 9, we were given some elements to having a vibrant prayer life. How do you have a, a vibrant prayer life? A prayer life that just really is next level. And Daniel gave us some, some great insights that we looked at last week. And they're solid. And, and hopefully you've put at least a couple of those, as we challenged last week, into practice. And you can add on to that as we go along. As you go along in your prayer life, as you build your relationship with Jesus Christ, continue to grow in your prayer life. But as we look at Daniel chapter 9, and Daniel prayed, and there was an answer like that. The angel Gabriel showed up, and we didn't really look at that part, but Gabriel showed up and gave an answer to Daniel's prayer. And it was, it was immediate. Like Daniel prayed, and boom, it happened. But here's the thing. In Daniel chapter 10, we see... That even with Daniel, things don't always happen when you pray. God doesn't always work just like that. Or we don't always see the results immediately. How many of you have experienced that in your own life? You're, you pray and like there's a lid. Like those prayers don't seem to be reaching heaven or something. Like, is God answering? Does God hear? And... And how do you live an unshakable life when it seems like God is absent or silent? How do you continue to, how do you continue to, to press on and be solid? How, how do you have staying power when that's the case? We, we want to look at those answers. There are answers to that question. It's not a, oh, all, help, all hope is lost. We might as well just give up and pack it up and go home. You know, we'll finish out the series on a... No, we're going to finish out on a, on a, I believe, a great note. I believe God has some great things for us in Daniel chapter 10. If you didn't grab a Bible, bring a Bible, a uh, tablet, whatever. Grab one there in front of you. I really want you to be able to follow along with paper or on a tablet. I'll have a lot of it on the screen be able to see it, but I, I think there's just something about being able to hold it in your own hands and follow along in the teaching notes and fill in some blanks, and I think God's going to have a word for us today. I'm trusting that. It's page 634 if you're grabbing a KWC Bible. But as we look into chapter 10, before I really get into the, the heart of the message today, I do want to acknowledge that in Daniel chapter 10, we're going to get uh, a, a view of the spiritual world. There are some things that are going on beyond what we can see, taste, smell, etc. The Bible speaks about it in a variety of places and we do see it in Daniel chapter 10. And though it's not the, the heart of the message, it is worth covering today. And there are three things in particular that I think we need to know about the spiritual world. Number one, we can see from Daniel chapter 10 as well as the rest of scripture that angels are real and powerful. Throughout scripture, angels are presented as one of three things and oftentimes it's one or two of these where you'll see uh, an angel mentioned and they are doing one of two, one of th these three things. One, they're a messenger. 
That they're giving a special word from the Lord. Or, or another one, they're warriors, which we'll see in this case in Daniel chapter 10. And they are also worshipers. We see that especially in Isaiah chapter 6, where there are cherubim and seraphim, different kinds of angels around the throne, worshiping, praising God. That's what they do. They're messengers, they're warriors, they're worshipers. Never once in Scripture are they presented as weak, dainty, or imaginary. They're real, and they're powerful. And it's important for us to understand that and acknowledge that today. Second we see in Daniel chapter 10, and we see throughout Scripture, is that demons, fallen angels, are also real and powerful. Never once do we see Scripture treat them lightly. Never once do we see Scripture kind of say, ah, you can approach them and you can make fun of them. You can, you know, encourage people to dress up like them, etc. You know, emulate them or celebrate them. Never once do we see that in Scripture. Demons are given respect in God's Word. In that, you, you don't approach them lightheartedly. And you certainly can't approach them in your own strength or power. And so it's important for us again to acknowledge, to understand that. The third thing we'll see in Daniel chapter 10, and we see this throughout scripture, is that angels and demons have a hierarchy. In the spiritual world is no different than our world. What we are accustomed to. God has created things with order. There is a hierarchy. There are different levels, different abilities, different purposes that angels have, that they serve. Okay? Likewise, demons, there is a hierarchy. Different ones answer to different levels. Again, we're not going to get into that, and I tend to stay away from this for the most part because I, I don't want us to be thinking about angels and demons because there can be a tendency to lift up angels more than we need to. And there can be a tendency to be afraid, you know, like there's a demon behind every bush or, you know, like the demon of this and the demon of that. And, and I just, I don't think that's really necessarily healthy or helpful, but it is important for us to acknowledge that they both exist. Angels and demons do exist. They are real, they are powerful, and the spiritual world does impact our world. Okay? And to also understand that our world and what we do can also impact the spiritual world. And we'll see this in Daniel 10, but again, it's not the heart of the message. What we want to go after today is our last and final key to living an unshakable life, and that is perseverance. I looked up perseverance and I came up with a great synonym. It's staying power. And I just love that. And so it's the title of the message. And we're going to look at how, how to have staying power. How do you keep on pressing on in life? How do you keep the faith? How do you stand in faith when, in particular, when your prayers aren't answered? Or at least from everything you can experience, they haven't been answered yet. What do you do? How do you press on? So Daniel chapter 10, let's jump in. Verse 1, in the third year of Cyrus. And we know exactly when this is. This is 536 B.C. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, revelation was given to Daniel. And I shared a couple weeks ago, in the month of December, we're going to use Advent a time of preparation, a time of celebrating the coming of Christ to take a look at part of Daniel and part of Revelation and talk about, because both of them speak about Christ coming to earth as a child, as an infant. They also talk about his second coming. And so we'll take a look at both of those. It's going to be kind of a, a an overview. Okay, we're not, we're not going to get lost in the woods. When, when I think of Revelation, and you think of all these different creatures, and there are a lot of things 
that take a lot of different interpretation and, and we'll, some of that we can pull through and we can understand and there are some things that I'll just say I don't know. Even though I told some students at the elementary school at lunch on, on a Wednesday a couple weeks ago that I know a lot of things because here's the deal. I saw one of the students at uh, the new store in Cairo and so when, uh, when I saw him at lunch I said, hey, did you have fun at Gordman's last night? He's like, how'd you know I was there? <laughs> I said, I, I know a lot of things. You'd be surprised at what I know. <laughs> and I'm just kind of messing with him. And, and another classmate of his like, oh yeah? what I eat last night? <laughs> so I looked at him. Spaghetti. No way. You're, you're, you're right. What did I eat the day before that? So I looked at him again. Hot dogs. It's like, no. I, didn't, I had it. He said, whatever. I said, are you sure? Are you sure you didn't have hot dogs? There's more than one meal. What did you have at the other meal? He's like, Oh, you're right. <laughs> and the other classmates like, we had hot dogs for lunch. <laughs> I smiled and walked off. <laughs> like, don't don't ask me any other questions. But I, I don't have any like special revelations from God. I, I do believe though that God's word speaks and that it's applicable and there are things that we can learn from God's word that God, God truly wants us to understand and to apply to our lives and that's what we're going to go after today. So we'll talk about Revelation and some of these different things that Daniel will talk about in Daniel chapter 11, chapter 12 in the month of December. Let's go back to this. Its message was, was true and it concerned a great war. The understanding of the message came to him in a vision. At that time, I, Daniel, mourned for three weeks. I ate no choice food, no meat or wine touched my lips, and I used no lotions at all until the three weeks were over. Many scholars would suggest that when it says he used no lotions, this is really saying he didn't take a bath. I mean, for them and their culture, he didn't take a bath. I would not recommend this. I think it can be healthy to go without food or at least to go without a, a the food that we would normally eat and maybe just eat some crackers and juice or something, a little bit of nutrients and to, to spend some focused time in prayer for a set amount of time, I think that can be great. I wouldn't suggest that you go without showering for three weeks. On the 24th day of the first month, as I was standing on the bank of the great river, the Tigris, I looked up and there before me was a man dressed in linen with a belt of fine gold from Uphaz around his waist. His body was like topaz, his face like lightning, his eyes like flaming torches, his arms and legs like the gleam of burnished bronze, and his voice like the sound of a multitude. I'm going to pause right there and though it's not really life application, it is I think at least worth noting who people think this is that Daniel is seeing, that Daniel is experiencing. There are many scholars that su would suggest that this is a theophany or in particular a Christophany. A theophany is, is a vision or an understanding, an encounter with God in some kind of a form. And oftentimes in scripture, it will be like a human form. In, in Moses' case, it was the burning bush. But there is a manifestation of God's presence so that there is a, an encounter, a visible encounter with God. And in particular, there are those that would suggest that this is actually Christ pre-incarnate. Before he came to earth as a child, born as the child in the manger, that this is Jesus and there is scripture that could support that in Revelation chapter 19 verse 6 it says his arms and his feet shone like polished bronze and his voice roared like a vast multitude 
of people. There is a description in Revelation 19 that is very similar to this here. So it is possible. I'm not going to count that out. If that's what God wanted to do, God can do what God wants to do. Can we just agree with that? But I also will say I wasn't there. And so just like when we talked about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace and there was a fourth one in there with them and some suggest that that also was a Christophany and I told you then I don't know I wasn't there I wasn't here so I still don't know I personally think that this is actually Gabriel speaking to him but I could be wrong he had an encounter with Gabriel and I think it's possible that this is Gabriel once again based on some things that we'll see in just a little bit. But again, three words that are hard for me to say but I will say them again. I don't know. Okay? Now with that said. Verse 7, I, Daniel, was the only one who saw the vision. Those who were with me did not see it, but such terror overwhelmed them that they fled and hid themselves. So I was left alone, gazing at this great vision. I had no strength left. My face turned deathly pale, and I was helpless. Then I heard him speaking, and as I listened to him, I fell into a deep sleep, my face to the ground. A hand touched me and set me trembling on my hands and knees. He said, Daniel, you who are highly esteemed. Now if you're following along in a different translation, it very likely will say something different than highly esteemed. As I look this up, the word that's used here is a word that can have a a little bit of a variety of understandings, a variety of different interpretations. It's the word kamad. Everybody say kamad. Kamad. He's like, what did I just say? Well, the King James Version translates it greatly beloved, which I love. I like that. Greatly beloved. The Good News Translation just says, Daniel, God loves you. Well, okay, that's pretty straight and to the point. The New Living Translation says, You are precious to God. I like that one too. You, You have value. It's the same thing, by the way, that Gabriel told Daniel in Daniel chapter 9 verse 23. He says, You, you are highly esteemed. You, you have value to God. You are loved by God. He's saying this to him again. It was said to Daniel in Daniel chapter 9 but he's saying it to him again. And then he says consider carefully the words I'm about to speak to you and stand up for I have now been sent to you. And when he said this to me I stood up trembling. So the first thing that I want us to see as we talk about perseverance, as we talk about having staying power, is that we need to remember that God loves you more than you know. And some of you just need to hear that today. You need to hear that God loves you more than you know. More than you know. Daniel needed to know that he was loved by God. He had spent 21 days, 21 hard days, praying, 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 and and just basically hearing nothing in return, not seeing anything from God. And some of you, you've been there. You have been praying and praying and praying. And very likely, there are a number of you that have been praying for longer than 21 days about something. And you have not seen anything anything happen towards that prayer coming to fruition. And it's possible that some of you are starting to question, starting to wonder, does does God love me? He answered their prayer request. This is happening for them. I got I got nothing. And you start questioning whether or not God loves you. And when we start questioning whether or not God loves us, I I think we start shaking. 
in our faith. And we might be likely to fall where we wouldn't have fell before because we were standing in his love. But then we start to question his love. And we become weak and weaker. And Daniel's reminded. He gets a heavenly reminder. And so again, I, whether it's whether, whether it's a Christophany or an angel, whatever the case, the message is from God, right? Can we, we'll just agree with that. So the message is from God. Daniel, you are loved, greatly beloved. And I would say to you, church, you are more loved by God than you realize. And I said, well, I, I know John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world, he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. I, like, I, I know that. And, and so we, how, how much does God love you? And we, well, he, God loves me this much. And we, and we can kind of wrap our brain around that. Sort of. But understand this. You, the love of God is unwarranted. You, you, God doesn't love you because you're all that. It's because he is. His love is unwarranted, but it's also unequaled. God loves you more than you know. And some of you just need to, you just need to let that soak in today. That God loves you more than you know. Daniel needed to hear that. And I think there are some of you that needed to as well. Verse 12. Then he continued, Do not be afraid, Daniel, since the first day. Since when? The first day. That you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before your God. Your words were heard. And I have come in response to them. Since the very first day, I, I know nothing has happened. At least it looks like to you nothing has happened. You thought nobody heard you. You thought in particular that God didn't hear you. But know this, your words were heard and I have come in response to them. But the prince of the Persian kingdom, so this is what we are talking about earlier, the spiritual world, prince of the Persian kingdom resisted me 21 days. Then Michael, archangel, one of the chief princes came to help me because I was detained there with the king of Persia. Now I have come to explain to you what will happen to your people in the future for the vision concerns a time yet to come. The second thing that we'll pull from Daniel chapter 10 is that we need to trust that God is doing more than you know. Daniel knew this before we talked about it in week one. That God is doing things. There are things at work. We see what's going on in the earthly realm, but there are things going on in the heavenly realms. And Daniel seemed to understand that in Daniel chapter 1. But as we get into Daniel chapter 10, there's a lot of things that have happened. And where Daniel's at right now, it seems like God has stopped working. And so again, some of you just need to know, and maybe it's different ones, but some of you just need to know that we need to trust that God is doing more than you know. I love the stories that we have in our church, and there are a number of ones where there was one spouse that prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed for their spouse to come to the Lord, to, to know Christ, to surrender their life to the Lord. And it seemed like, probably to them and to other family members and friends that joined them in that prayer, that, that nothing was happening. But then there was a day that they surrendered their life to Christ. And then there was another day where they were baptized. Then there's a, that day where they, we just see that they continue to grow in Christ. And like, God was working all along. We just, we just couldn't see it. We weren't aware of it. We didn't didn't really acknowledge it. We need to just trust that God is doing more than you know. 
Verse 15, while he was saying this to me, I bowed with my face toward the ground and was speechless. Then one who looked like a man touched my lips and I opened my mouth and began to speak. I said to the one standing before me, I am overcome with anguish because of the vision, my Lord, and I feel very weak. How can I, your servant, talk with you, my Lord? My strength is gone. He, he do, still doesn't have staying power. It's like, yeah, okay, I remember God loves me. I trust that God is working more than I know. But, but my strength is gone and I can hardly breathe. Again, the one who looked like a man touched me and gave me strength. Do not be afraid. You who are highly esteemed. He repeats himself. He comes back to that. You who are beloved. You who are loved by God. You who have great value to God. You who are precious to God. He said, peace. Be strong now. Be strong. When he spoke to me, I was strengthened and said, speak, my Lord, since you have given me strength. The third and final thing, if we want to have staying power, is we need to let God give us a recharge. How do you do that though? I, I think basically is just you acknowledge your weakness. That's what Daniel did. He just, he'll, I'm weak. I, I don't have the strength to continue to press on. I, I've used up everything that I had. Everything that was in reserve. I've used up. I'm on empty. I'm about ready to go black screen. And he's touched. He's spoken to. And I think there are those of us that are here today that we just need to just Say to the Lord, God, God, I'm on empty right now. I am out of strength. And I can't continue. I can't press on without your touch. Without hearing from you. Without getting a recharge from you. I, I think that's one of the great things about a Sunday. Is that this is a great opportunity to get a recharge. I think as we go through the week and as we have all the different things that happen in the week, I don't know about you, but it can be pretty draining. And, and, and even though there are times you try to plug in and, and uh, get a, a quick boost and here's my devotion and spend some time in devotion, to me Sunday is a, just a great opportunity to get recharged by God. Amen. And I would encourage you today, take advantage of the opportunity that is yours. Humble yourself. Tell God you're weak and that you need a recharge. Whether it's a touch from him or just to hear his voice. But to say, hey, I love you. You're precious to me. You mean something to me. You have value. Trust that I'm working. I know you don't see what's going on. You don't know what you don't know at all. And, and there are things that you're not going to understand. And, and understand this. God doesn't always work the way that we want him to work. We can pray. It doesn't mean that God's going to answer it accordingly. Because after all, he is God. And I'm thankful that God doesn't always answer the prayers the way I ask them. The way I prayed. Because his ways are higher than my ways. And his thoughts are so much, so much higher than my thoughts. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. But they're also way higher than your thoughts too. He knows what needs to happen. Not just for your life, but for others as well. And so we trust that he's working more than we know. And more than we understand. He's working. And just the same, we know that it's not by our might, nor by our power, but by His. But by the Spirit, saith the Lord. And so, maybe today you're, you're needing a recharge. Ask Him. Ask Him.
He'll do it. I'm going to invite our ushers to make their way forward as well as the praise team. Great opportunity. A great opportunity to do what we've just talked about. Particularly to ask God for a recharge. As the praise team sings, I raise a hallelujah. If you look at the words of the song and think of the words of the song, it, it's, it's written from a place of weakness. It's written from a, a heart crying out to God. The backstory of this song is that there were a couple whose child was deathly ill. And the ones who wrote the song, good friends of the family, were crying out to God. And this, this song was birthed in that prayer time. Like, it, it's, it's looking really bleak. But I raise a hallelujah. I'm going to say, praise the Lord. I, I'm going to say, God, you're still good. I trust you in this. We trust you with this little one's life. Now their story has a very happy ending. Truth be told, not everybody has a happy ending. And some of you know that all too well. But God is still good. And God will give you a recharge. Heavenly Father, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your grace, your mercy in our lives. You are worthy of our praise. Lord, thank you for the reminder that you love us more than we could ever comprehend. And God, not because not because of who we are that you love us, it's because of who you are that you love us. And in response to that love and that understanding and knowing that you're a good Lord, that we trust you. Even when we don't see, even when we don't understand, even when we don't know what's going on, Lord, that we trust you to work for our good and for your glory. And God, for those that are here today that just simply put, they need a recharge. I pray that you would give that to them today. That we would live unshakable for your honor, for your glory. And it's in and for your name that I pray. Amen.
gonna hear my praises roar up from the ashes hope will arise death is defeated the king is alive sing a little louder sing a little louder Sing a little louder. Heaven comes to fight for me. Sing a little louder. I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder. You're gonna hear my praises roar. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. middle of the storm louder and louder you're gonna hear my praises roar 